Hello ladies and gentlemen, Teveron here, and welcome back to the Cat set review. This time we will be going over the black cards of Cat. Just as a reminder, these are my opinions and raw card evaluations having never actually played with the cards. If you would like to check out the previous reviews, just click the link in the description or the small pop-up in the upper right hand corner of the video. But enough introductions, let's see some cards. Arc Fiend of Ifnir. For 3 and 2 black, we have a 5-4 Flying Demon. Whenever you cycle or discard another card, put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on each creature your opponents control. Cycling of 2. Well, this guy seems kind of ridiculous. 5 mana for a 5-4 Flyer is already a good rate, even without the rest of the text box. But that cycling synergy, wow. The fact that it hits all of your opponent's creatures is kind of insane. The fact that you can cycle it if mana screwed or in a bad situation is just gravy. I'm honestly a bit amazed that this is a rare and not a mythic, not even legendary. I'll gladly take the ability to play two of these and giggle insanely the entire time. Baleful Amet, two and a black for a 4-3 lifelink crocodile demon. When Baleful Amet enters the battlefield, put a minus one minus one counter on target creature you control. Well, if you have a creature out that you don't mind shrinking, then three mana for a 4-3 lifelinker is pretty good. Though, if you have to put the counter on the croc itself, it's a lot less appealing. There are, however, a lot of cards doing this type of thing in both black and green in this set, and a lot of synergy going on there. I think there is potentially a deck to be built. Is it a good deck? I honestly have no idea, but the tools are certainly there. Bone Picker, three and a black for a three two bird with flying and death touch. Bone Picker costs three less to cast if a creature died this turn. So one mana for a three two with flying and death touch is ridiculously good. Realistically though, there is no way this is ever going to come down on turn 1, and turn 2, while technically possible with 1 mana removal to enable it, is also a bit of a pipe dream. Casting this card for its full mana cost is something I never want to do, but if you can build your deck in such a way that you can consistently cast this fairly early game with the cost reduction, especially if you're able to do other things in the same turn, then this is a card I'd be interested in playing. But if we can't do that in a very consistent fashion, then it holds no interest for me. Bond to the Glorified, two and a black for a 4-6 legendary god with menace and indestructible. Bond to the Glorified can't attack or block unless a creature died under your control this turn. For a one and a black, sacrifice another creature, scry one, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Ah yes, another god. Welcome to the Pantheon, my friend. Unfortunately, I don't see Bontu as a card that you can just stick in any deck running black and have him do good work, as you need to build specifically to support him. In most decks, Bontu could be a bit hard to turn on consistently since sacrificial lambs are generally a finite resource. In a correctly built deck, however, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Hidden Stockpile helps quite a bit, and there are moderately successful decks already floating around which are built around that card. Bantu should slot perfectly into those. Whether or not this particular god will be able to have any impact outside of that specific deck, however, remains to be seen. I'd be a lot more excited about it if it drained your opponent for one life every time any of your creatures died for any reason. Cartouche of Ambition, two and a black for an enchantment, enchant creature you control. When Cartouche of Ambition enters the battlefield, you may put a minus one minus one counter on target creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus one and has lifelink. All right, straight talk here. The cartouches are a bit of an enigma for me. Off the bat, the white and green ones seem to be the best, and the rest seem to be worth not very much in constructed. I think all of them as a whole are a limited card design, but I know they synergize with the trials. The black, green, and red trials seem decent, with the blue being a bit less so, and the white not seeming very good at all. At this point, I'm just not sure playing a below average card like this one is worth the chance of reusing a trial. 
I'm certainly willing to be proven wrong, but at this point, I'm just not very impressed with Cartouche of Ambition. Cruel Reality 5 and 2 black for an enchantment. Enchant Creature At the beginning of Enchanted Player's Upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker. If the player can't, he or she loses 5 life. Well, 7 mana is a lot. However, this is also a card that just flat out wins you the game if the opponent can't remove it. If you aren't in a position that you're just going to die immediately, it helps bring you back into the game by equalizing board states and then obliterate your opponent's life total in huge 5 point chunks. This seems like an incredibly good win condition for control decks, the only downside being Rexage just laughs at it. Cursed Minotaur 2 and a black for a 3-2 zombie minotaur with menace. So this is both a zombie and a minotaur, which are tribes that are both getting a bit of love in this set. However, outside of those, um, I don't think it's very playable. Perhaps in the supported archetypes, then it might see a bit of play. But at most, it's going to be filler. When you put all of your better options in the deck and need room, then a cursed minotaur may be stepping up to take those slots. Doomed Dissenter. For one and a black, we have a 1-1 one, one human. When Doomed Dissenter dies, create a 2-2 two, two, black zombie creature token. Well, this certainly goes hand in hand with cards such as Blister Pod and Carrier Thrall. Only unlike those, the stats on the token are better than on the original creature. Between these and Embalm, there might be enough going on to make Nantuko Husk Aristocrat strategies viable again. Outside of something in that vein, though, I don't think the card is actually very good. Dread Wanderer is one black for a 2-1 zombie jackal. Dread Wanderer enters the battlefield tapped. For two and a black, return Dread Wanderer from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate this ability only any time you could cast a sorcery, and only if you have one or fewer cards in hand. Well, Black Red Aggro didn't actually need any more help, but it's getting it anyway. And with the direction that this set seems to take such a deck, the buyback condition on Dread Wanderer should be no problem at all to fulfill. Sure, coming into play tapped is a minor drawback, but in a deck that doesn't actually want to block, then it doesn't really matter that much. It's also a zombie. Dune Beetle for one and a black, we have a 1-4 Insect, and that's it. This is another card designed with limited play in mind, not meant for constructed. Festering Mummy. For a black, we get a 1-1 one, one Zombie. When Festering Mummy dies, you may put a minus one minus one counter on target creature. So there are three scenarios in which I'd be willing to play Festering Zombie. One, in the sideboard to come in against White Weenie or Mono Red, but we all know that that's not an option. The second is, if a dedicated minus one minus one counter strategy shakes out to be viable. Or three, and most likely, in a zombie tribal deck. Otherwise, I'm not touching this guy. Grim Strider is three and a black for a 6-6 six, six horror. Grim Strider gets minus one minus one for each card in your hand. So you may think I'm crazy for saying this, but I believe this card is actually pretty good. But only in the right deck. And which deck is that? Why the black-red deck that wants to empty its hand as fast as possible and drop this as a 4-mana 6-6? Six, six. I'm not sure it would ever want to play the full three of them, but two seems like a perfectly reasonable number to me. Horror of the Broken Lands. 4-4 four, four and a black, we have a 4-4 four, four horror. Whenever you cycle or discard another card, Horror of the Broken Lands gets plus two plus one until end of turn, cycling of a black. Not super exciting, but a perfectly reasonable card in a deck that wants to be cycling things. And if you ever actually cast it, then the rest of your cycling cards makes it a reasonable threat. Liliana Death's Majesty. For three and two black, we have a Liliana Planeswalker with five loyalty. Plus one, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. Put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Her minus three is return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That creature is a black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. And minus seven, destroy all non-zombie creatures. 
well, I'm certainly more excited about this iteration of Liliana than I was about the new iteration of Gideon. She is very robust, starting at 5 loyalty and ticking up to 6 right away while putting out a blocker to protect herself, which is great. Her uptick also fuels your graveyard for her minus 3 ability, and her ultimate is cheap enough in comparison to her starting loyalty that it is an extremely relevant threat. Whether in a dedicated zombie-centric strategy, in a reanimator, or your run-of-the-mill control deck, Liliana Death's Majesty should be able to thrive. Liliana's Mastery 3 and 2 black for an enchantment. Zombies you control get plus 1 plus 1. When Liliana's Mastery enters the battlefield, create 2 2 2 black zombie creature tokens. Yeah, zombies seem to be gaining steam. For 5 mana, we make 2 2 2s that are actually 3 3s after the plus 1 plus 1 hits, and buff all of your other zombies in the process. It's a 1 card build your own army. I think board sweepers might need to be played a bit more heavily in the near future. Lord of the Accursed. Two and a black for a 2-3 zombie. Other zombies you control get plus one plus one. Pay one and a black and tap. All zombies gain menace until end of turn. You want more help for the zombie tribe? No? Well too bad cause here's some more. So between this and Liliana's Mastery, we have a total of 5 pump effects that we can play in the zombie deck, 7 if you want to throw in Always Watching and go way over the top, and most of them bring bodies to the table as well. And giving menace when necessary will make blocking very difficult for your opponents. I really hope zombies are actually good now, but I also hope that they aren't completely busted. Miasmic Mummy one and a black for a 2-2 zombie jackal. When Miasmic Mummy enters the battlefield, each player discards a card. So another zombie that could definitely see play in that deck. Or perhaps even in the Rakdos Hellbent strategy I've mentioned a couple of times now. In the Hellbent deck in particular, the discard becomes much less balanced, as you actually want to be emptying your hand. So that's definitely something to consider. Nest of Scarabs. For two and a black, we have an enchantment. Whenever you put one or more minus one minus one counters on a creature, create that many one one black insect creature tokens. Well, there is certainly a deck this seems to belong in. However, even if the minus one minus one counters strategy ends up being good, I'm not sure this is a card that you'd want to play in it as it suffers from the issue that it doesn't do anything when you play it. It needs something more to happen to give you any benefit whatsoever. And I know I hear some of you asking, well, what about Drakehaven? Isn't that the same? You seem to be really up on that card. In short, yes, it is, sort of. However, when you can cycle cards for as low as one mana, it becomes a lot easier to get value out of the Haven immediately. And consistently, since cycling will naturally draw you into more cyclers. Also, 2-2 two -two flyers are much better than 1-1 one -one non-flyers. And... I could also just be wrong about both of them. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time. Never to return. For one and two black, the never half of the card says, at sorcery speed, destroy target creature or planeswalker. Return says, at sorcery speed, exile target card from a graveyard, create a two two black zombie creature token. Hallelujah, more unconditional planeswalker removal. Even without the return side of this, I'd be very excited. Kill a creature or planeswalker early, then later on when you have no better use for your mana, make a 2-2 zombie. What's not to like? Painful Lesson. For two and a black, we have a sorcery that says target player draws two cards and loses two life. Well, as long as Read the Bones is in duels, then cards like this are not going to see much play. Unless you want to make your opponent draw cards and lose life. If that's the case, then this is your card. Plague Belcher. For two and a black, we have a 5-4 zombie beast with menace. When Plague Belcher enters the battlefield, put two minus one minus one counters on target creature you control. Whenever another zombie you control dies, each opponent loses one life. Well, this is the card that Baleful Amet wishes it were. One drop zombie into two drop zombie into Plague Belcher seems like a curve that would be pretty hard to beat. This thing is an absolute monster. Ruthless Sniper. 
For one black, we get a 1-2 Human Archer. Whenever you cycle or discard a card, you may pay one. If you do, put a minus one minus one counter on target creature. This card would be great as a sideboard card for a deck with lots of cyclers. Sadly, we don't do sideboards and duels, and as it doesn't have cycling itself, I'm not sure it's good enough to be main deckable. Scarab Feast. For a single black, we have an instant. Exile up to three target cards from a single graveyard, and it has cycling of a black. And here we have another sideboard card, but this time with cycling, which means it's actually a card that could see play. Since in matchups you don't need to exile cards from a graveyard, you can just cycle it away. Isn't cycling grand? Soul Stinger. For three and a black, we have a four five scorpion demon, which is a very interesting creature type. When Soul Stinger enters the battlefield, put two minus one minus one counters on target creature you control. When Soul Stinger dies, you may put a minus one minus one counter on target creature for each minus one minus one counter on Soul Stinger. There is enough going on with this card that I think it could be decent in a deck trying to abuse this mechanic. Alongside other creatures that are doing the same sort of thing, it becomes a way to wreak havoc on your opponent's creatures. Just throw some more counters on it, then rain them down on the other side of the board. There is even the potential to get more out of it than the 5 toughness of the creature. For example, you have 4 counters on this already, making it a 0-1, and then you play something that puts 3 more minus 1 minus 1 counters on it. Well, since it's a single source and all the counters go on all at once, you get to distribute 7 minus 1 minus 1 counters as you see fit. Again, I'm not saying that this is a strategy that will definitely be good, but it is one that should be looked into and tested. Splendid Agony is two and a black for an instant. Distribute two minus one minus one counters among one or two target creatures. Well, the minus one minus one counter strategy could want to play some number of these. However, in a format without sideboards, I don't think the card is very good outside of that. Stir the Sands. For four and two black, we have a sorcery. Create three 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens, cycling of three and a black. When you cycle Stir the Sands, create a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token. Well, I'm not sure the zombie deck will want to play a six mana card, but as it's almost certainly going to be playing at least four or five mana cards, it's actually a possibility. Plus, cycling is awesome. You heard it here first, folks. Supernatural Stamina. One black for an instant? Until end of turn, target creature gets plus 2 plus 0 and gains. When this creature dies, return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. I'm not too keen on combat tricks and constructed. That said, if it had cycling, I'd probably play it. As is, not really interested. Trial of Ambition. One and a black for an enchantment. When Trial of Ambition enters the battlefield, target opponent sacrifices a creature. When a cartouche enters the battlefield under your control, return Trial of Ambition to its owner's hand. Well, I think this is probably the best of the trials, though closely followed by the green and red ones. If I'm not running any cartouches in my deck, though, and there's a possibility that I could trigger the additional effect fairly consistently, I'd probably run at least one Oath of Liliana before I put any of these in a deck. That said, two mana is easier to cast than three, and the lower casting cost may be enough to give this the nod over the oath. Certainly so in a deck that is not running a significant number of planeswalkers. Unburden. One and two black for a sorcery. Target player discards two cards. Cycling of two. I like this card a lot. First of all, it's the most cost-efficient discard spell we've ever gotten in duels. Whispers of Imrakul aside, of course, as it needs additional enabling to perform to its full potential. And second, it has cycling, so you can pitch it if it isn't needed. Strong card. Glad to have it. And that brings us to the end of the black cards. And here are the cards I'm personally looking forward to playing with the most. Cruel Reality. Sure, Reclamation Sage just wrecks this plan, but I still feel like it's a win condition worth running. Liliana Death's Majesty. How could I possibly say no to the Master of Death herself? Plus, 
That is probably the most amazing Liliana art I have ever seen. Never to return. I've always been completely dumbfounded that we didn't get Ruinous Path in duels. It's high time we have a card like this in the game. Even if the return part of the card wasn't even there, Never would be an imminently playable spell. Plague Belcher. I don't know. There's just something about casting a 3-mana 5-4 that does nasty stuff to your opponents in addition that gives me goosebumps. So, what cards are you most excited to give a shuffle? Are there any cards that you hoped would make it in that didn't? I'd love to have seen Faith of the Devoted make it in. But then again, I am cycling crazy, if you couldn't tell. Tomorrow, we will be looking at the red cards of Cat. I do hope you join me for that. And until then, friends, be excellent to each other.